Every week, you know, we, we take an issue and we delve into an issue on this episode of Closer Look. I want to talk about what the fuss is all about, all this fuss about elections. Let me tell you something. We laugh at politicians every day. We laugh at what Chamisa did. We laugh at what Idi did. We have tea talking about it. We spend time in our hair saloons talking about it. You know what the truth is? The truth is, the joke is on us. You know who they're really laughing at? You. And you know why they're laughing at you? Because everything politicians do, you give them the power to do it. I want to talk to Zimbabwe tonight about the reality of our country. We're a country with an economy of $16 billion. $16 billion. Johannesburg has got an economy of $83 billion. Take the number five. Multiply that number to our economy. That gives you the Johannesburg economy. We're not as big as we think we are. We're not as sweet as we think we are. Hello, hello, hello. This is what Zimbabwe is doing. We must understand something as a country which I think we are completely failing to understand in the process of this fuss. We are about to spend $274 million to figure out how to govern ourselves. It's not necessary. And I'll tell you why it's not necessary. You have a country where Zek has just released figures. 5.4 million is the number of registered voters. Over 50% of these numbers is women. By the way, remember, women are not even participating by and large in these elections. But 51% of the women went to register to vote so they can vote for men. But let me break down the numbers even more. The people aged between 18 years old and 30 years old are 1.6 million. These are pretty much your virgin voters. I mean, because they would have been too young to vote in any other election. 1.6 million voters. This is the largest voting block in this electoral college. The second block is people aged between 30 and 40 years old. They make up 1.5 million people. Collectively, you're looking at 60% of the electoral college. Here is the trouble with these two groups of people. Anybody under the age of 30, has probably never had a job, has probably uh, never really been to a place where they understand what a formal working environment is. They've never really been in enterprise that is formal. They are probably not banked. They are probably unbankable, which means they probably don't have a house. They probably don't have a stand. They probably don't have anything, including sense. Why? Because they grew up in a Zimbabwe which was already messed up. Understand, I'm talking about a group of people who they are only understanding of success, their only exchange with knowing or seeing what success looks like is ZANOPF ministers, ZANOPF ministers' children, and people who do business with ZANOPF. This is what they call success. They look at that and they idolize it. Then you have the second batch, the 1.5 million. This is a group of people who most likely still live with their parents, have some sort of jeti ideas, and now starting to have lots of kids in their parents' houses, and you end up with three generations, Muzukuru, Mwana, Tasekuru, Vesi, Vajigarapa, Mba, One. It's a generation that was told Zimbabwe used to be beautiful, but they don't know what that beauty looks like. The biggest trouble with these two generations, which make up 60% of the voting electoral college, is this. It's a generation that does not know what fighting for each other means. It's a generation that specializes in fighting against each other. We're talking about a generation that believes it is cool to attack one another. A generation who UK, who South Africa, that takes pride within that report on Zimbabwe and could have deport way. Why do they feel like this? Because they never grew up in a Zimbabwe that was united. The Zimbabwe they grew up in was always divided. These are the guys who the election is being done for. Now, contrary to them, you've got the other generation, age 50 and above. This is a generation that understands a couple of things. Number one, they're already registered voters. They're going to vote exactly how they've been voting before. Number two, it's a generation that understands that in this country, no matter right or wrong, you always fight for each other. It's a generation that understands, like my father. My father comes from a generation where he says, because and then I've got an, an Ambuya who's from Bulawayo, who as far as she's concerned, unless you're in Debele, you are nonsense. 
Unless you're in the Bele, you're a bad person, you're part of the people who caused us fall, that we will always have and fight for each other as the Ndebele people. It's a generation that understands that before right comes together. This is a lesson we don't understand as Zimbabwe. South Korea and North Korea two weeks ago did what everybody thought was the unthinkable. For 63 years, these two countries have been separated by a border which was put before them in 1950 to 1953 by United States of America and the Soviet Union, which is now uh, Russia. They finally decided they were going to close that gap. Why? Because they understood Korea understood we get more done when we do it together. We go far when we are going together. The economics is simple. We leverage off each other's strength when we're leveraging off each other. Zimbabwe, here is my lesson in Closer Look this week. What we must understand is as a generation, we achieve more when we do it together. We unite the country better when we stop dividing it. This election has done nothing but divide this country. In, we all know, are watching what's happening with Joanna Mamombe, with Jessima Jome. They are failing to unite a constituency. We are being participants in a fight that has nothing to do with us at a national level of narcissist, narcissistic men who are simply fighting for power so that you and me can give them more power. What if we tried something different? What if we tried to go to our politicians and say, with the same illegalities that you made legal in 2008 by creating a government of national unity, why don't you work together? Why don't you spend the $274 million on uniting us instead of dividing us? The numbers are clear. Women make up the majority. Young people make up the majority. It would be such a pity if the same women and the same youth used that power to destroy themselves. See you next week. Hi, guys. Thank you for supporting the Lumumba Files. To make sure you don't miss a show, press the subscribe button below and the notification button. That's the one with the little bell. And you will always get told when I put up a show. Thank you for watching. Head bowed.